I want to synchronize the movement of the clients on different canvases, and in this episode I'm going to find out what is the best way to achieve that. My goal in this episode is to make sure that all the clients can see all the objects on their canvases moving the same way. Right now the physics is working properly for each player, but one player has no idea what the other players are doing, so I need to synchronize the player's movements on the various canvases, for which first I have to decide which data they should send to the server, and then what the server should do with that data. The very first idea could be the one where all the clients keep sending their own positions to the other players through the server, and then they render the other players on the positions they receive from them. There are at least two big problems with that. First, if the player only knows the position of the other players without knowing their velocities, it cannot calculate the collision physics on the client side. And second, sending position coordinates in every game loop, which is 60 times per second, that can take a lot of bandwidth, which can cause really large latency, depending on the number of the players. If I want the physics to be calculated on the client side, I better send the players left, up, right and down boolean values to the other players. That way the client can calculate the other player's acceleration and velocity vectors on its own, and that will make simulating the collision handling also possible. If I want to do that, I can go to the user input file and call a function called emit user comments inside of the key down and key up events, which I will define below. It will create an object storing the values of the left, up, right and down values and the action too and then it will emit it to the server using the event called user comments. Then the server will be listening on this user comments event. I console.log the data it receives, and then I can test it by restarting the server, refreshing the browser, and after the connection has been established, I can see the user comment variable being displayed for every key up or key down event. And to solve the other big problem, which was sending more data to the server than necessary, I can send this message only if one of those four boolean variables has been changed, because now if I keep pressing one of the keys, the function attached to the key down event keeps being called, and so the player keeps emitting the user comments variable even if its value doesn't change. I can solve that by introducing a boolean variable that checks if the key has just been pressed, which means that the emit function is needed, or it has been pressed already for a while, then I won't call the emit user comments function. So whenever one of the key's direction properties turns from false to true, which means that the key just has been pressed, the just pressed variable will be true. Then at the end of the key down event, if it's true, then I call the emit user comment function and set the just pressed variable to false. That way it won't be called again until the key has been released. So I test it the same way as before. And now if I keep pressing one of the RO keys, then instead of emitting the user comments periodically, it will only emit it one single time at the moment I first press the key. And the next emit will happen only on the key up event when I'm releasing the key. So this is an efficient way to save some bandwidth. Then I use the same idea as I did for the client says hello to client event. That means that I make the server forward the client's data just this time, instead of a simple message, I need to broadcast the object with the four boolean variables of the player. I use the socket.broadcast.emit function, which will send the data for all the clients that are connected to the server, except for the sender, because the sender's object is supposed to be controlled directly by the user. So the server is listening on the user commands event, and the data that it receives will be values in the player's dictionary. The key will be the player's socket ID, and the boolean values will belong to the key. Before I broadcast it, I console.log it out on the terminal to make it easier to understand. So the socket ID is the key, the boolean variables are the values. Then I can broadcast the player object to the client using the event called command update. And I go back to the client and make it listen to this command update event. In the callback function, I iterate through the player object, which just arrived from the server. And for every player object, I set their left, up, right, and down properties to the values of the proper element from the player's dictionary. I also set an extra condition for that process so that it won't try to give values of the client ball if its value happens to be undefined. 
and I shouldn't forget to set the max speed of the other balls when creating them because without that there is about zero chance that they will move the same way on multiple canvases. So max speed will be equal to 5. And no need for the game logic. And what I will see here is that it looks like the two players are moving in the same way at first, but if I start moving around really quickly, the movements of the players on different canvases go out of sync very fast. And that's because although the own player reacts to the keyboard events immediately, there will be a latency between the three action and the data coming from the other players. And once they are out of sync, there is no way to sync it back. And this is a big problem of having a game physics on the client side only. I cannot guarantee the players having the same positions, and there is nothing to do to coordinate their movements, at least not without the help of the server. So including the so-called server authority is crucial for online multiplayer games. The idea behind the server-side physics model is that all the physics in the game gets calculated on the server side. The clients will still send the same user comments, but the server, instead of broadcasting those values, does the job of calculating the player's positions based on them, and it sends those positions to the client. In that case, all that happens on the client side is rendering the objects on the given positions. For that I will need to have the physics engine on the server side as well, and create the same body objects there too, for being able to simulate their collisions and keep track of their positions. So first I go to the JavaScript file, where the physics engine is stored, copy everything and paste it on the top of the server.js. This is not the most elegant way to get the physics on the server side. I'm planning to create an npm package out of this physics engine so that it will take only one line to import it as a module and not 828. But right now I don't have that yet, so here we go. Then, just like I have the client boss dictionary on the client side, I create a dictionary called server balls here. Ideally, these two dictionaries will always have the same body objects with the same values. I need it on the server for calculating the physics and on the client for rendering on the canvas. And I'm also going to rename the player's variable to player pos to make it clear that from now on it will only store the positions of the players. Then just like for the client balls, I create a ball on the server side as well whenever a client is connecting and set its max speed to 5 as well so it won't start moving faster and I input its starting coordinates in the player pause dictionary. And I also take care of the disconnect event, first by removing the object from the physics engine, then deleting it from the network, and also deleting its position values from the player pause variable. Then in the user comments event, wherever the comments came from, the ball with the corresponding ID will get the left, up, right, down, and action properties updated in the server balls, and it will not broadcast those boolean values anymore. Instead of that, I start a loop with the setInterval function that will run 60 times per second. I cannot use request animation frame this time because that function requires a browser window. I will only use that on the client side where the rendering happens. So the server loop function will include the user interaction function, which converts the player's keyboard comments into acceleration and the physics loop, which handles the collisions of the objects and calculates their new positions. Then I collect those new positions in the player pos variable, which will then emit all the player's position to all the players in every frame. Let me console.log the player pos that will be sent to the client. So now I connect with three players, and this is what every client will receive 60 times per second. This method takes much more bandwidth than the client-side physics model, but if everything goes as planned, this one will also take care of the synchronization. But before checking if that's really the case, I need to make a few changes on the client.js. First, instead of having a specific player ball object for the player to control, the player object will be one of the client balls elements. It gets created in the connect event and got attached to the user input there as well. So from now on, the player will only appear on the screen after a successful connection to the server. So the client will send the user comments to the server and receive the positions from it, which will happen in the positions update event. The server sends the player post periodically, and I iterate through that variable using the setPosition method of the client balls object. As I mentioned, there won't be any physics running on the client side, and that's when the function called renderOnly becomes useful, 
This is already defined in the physics engine. It only iterates through the body's array to render them. So I call it in the request animation frame function. And before I test the code, I also create a self ID variable to store the socket ID of the client itself, which is something that is not necessary at the moment, but could be useful later. And let's start to browser windows and start moving the players. There will be a latency between pressing the key and seeing the player move because the data goes to the server. The server calculates the position, which will come back to get rendered. That latency cannot be avoided, but it can be helped by methods like client prediction or interpolation, although I'm not going to implement those for now. Next, I'm going to replace the ball objects to capsule objects. That way I can make sure that the angular collision can be simulated and displayed properly as well. I keep the client ball object's name, but I will create capsule objects in it instead. Those will take two more arguments because capsules have central line segments instead of central points. And I switch to capsules in the server's new player event as well. Then in the server loop, the data I want to emit to the client will not only consist of x and y values, but also the angle property of the object. So I add it to the player pause object too. And once that player pause object arrives to the client, I'm going to use the angle value as an argument in the set position method of the player objects. And I make sure that when a new player is connecting to the server and hence being instantiated on the client side, it will be also a capsule and not a ball object. And these few steps made it possible for the players to simultaneously rotate. So again, right now all the physics is calculated on the server side, which can cause some latency between the keyboard event and the player's moves. Plus it also uses more bandwidth than the client side physics model, but on the other hand, the objects on each of the canvases have the same positions and their movements are synchronized, thanks to the server authority. And this model is working well enough to start writing multiplayer games, which is what I'm going to do next.